charge it to the mic. I brought my performance art kit. I could talk about uh, many things. Um, hospitality services, small paper cups. Excuse me? That happens sometimes. Small paper cups, uh, rubber stamps, or hospitality services, does anyone have a preference? You want to know what happened? Hospitality services? Yes. Okay. I've been working in hospitality services since 1987. I got my first job in hospitality services at the Weston Hotel in Boston, Copley Place Weston, and um, that was in 1987, in the spring of 1987. And all summer long, I was going through a difficult time um, as far as my mental health. I don't really know the reasoning behind it all, but things were very strange and I was struggling. So part of my illness, or what I believe to be part of my illness, was to just invade other people. So I would go, I had the keys to every room in a 2,000 room hotel, okay? I would let myself in and try on their clothes. <laughs> and I loved the, the women, uh, you know, very kind of shishi hotel, and they had these beautiful ball gowns all the time in the closets, and I would just look at it, and I'm like, wow, I'll never have anything like this, you know, my whole life. So I, I would put it on very quickly, and just sort of like pose around the room, because the, <laughs> there'd be like a full length mirror, you know, the sliding glass doors, full length mirror. And then I'd hear a knock on the door, and it'd be my friend Stuart saying, Sheen, Sheen, are you in this room? Sheen, are you at it again? And I would be like, oh no. Um, he would catch me um, sometimes um, dipping into the bar. Sometimes instead of trying on people's clothes, I would like, each room had a little mini refrigerator with nips and like snacks, and I would dip into that bar, and I'd like sit in front of it and weep. And <laughs> this is true. I would sit in front of it and weep, and uh, he'd knock on the door again, Shane, are you in there? Are you at it again? And he would come in the room with his pass keys, and he would find me weeping in front of this, this tiny little refrigerator filled with nips and snacks. <laughs> and I would be like, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I need to say, hey, hey, it's okay. Pat me on the back and say, after work, I'll buy you flowers. And I said, no, no, it's not gonna work this time. And he said, I know, I know, a piece of fruit. And it did, it did, it got me back together. And we, we finished the day of work. And uh, that was my first experience in hospitality service. Do you care for me to continue? Yes, yes. Um, my second job in hospitality services came in 1988, and this was at the Needham Sheridan, which I still um, am employed there. Um, little I can say about this Sheridan, I still have the keys to every room, but the, the only thing I'm really interested in looking at now, since I'm not in the same mental state, is the uh, magazines. People keep very strange magazines. They're, it's primarily a business hotel. They keep things like, um, oh wow, I, I can't even remember. But they've got lots of graphs and, uh, you know, like men wearing glasses with their feet on the uh, desk. You know, like the executive man, like this could be you. You could sit around, and make lots of money, and do nothing. Which is what I used to do at, at the hotel. I would, I would <laughs> sit around at my desk and, and do close to nothing. Uh, until every, some people here know the Harry story. Harry was hired in January of 1990. Yeah, people hissing Harry. Harry was a nightmare and I had to fire him, but I needed like grounds to fire him. Um, and it, it took lots of time to uh, do my job and, and I had to do his and, and also be on his tail a lot. Uh, this isn't gonna be funny. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it. Small paper cups. Okay. Um, I'm interested in small paper cups. I'll show them to you. These cups in particular, I 
like a lot. Um, they depict scenes from The Wizard of Oz, and they tell a little story about The Wizard of Oz on either side. This one says, Dorothy, I mean, the Scarecrow and Dorothy discover that the wizard is really an ordinary man. And there's a picture of him looking behind the curtain, just like the movie. Just like the movie. And this one has the flying monkeys on it. The Wicked Witch sends the winged monkeys to bring Dorothy and the ruby slippers back to her. Um, these cups, I, I, don't, I have a great affection for them. I've had them for about three weeks. And I really feel that they're they're mine in every way. I I made a film. I made a film about them. Um, I don't know much about their history. Like they just sort of came to me via uh, Connecticut. They were they were born in Connecticut, and they were brought to me. I chatted up a lot. I made a film title, Small Paper Cups, and I told everyone what a great project it was, and and really hyped it up. But I'm a hoaxer. I was lying about the whole thing. I didn't. I wasn't working on the film, and so when the cups came to me, I had to do it. And now I made it, and it's shown, and everything's um, okay. Thank you very much. subject right here. I've got some sensitive poetry I want to read to you. <laughs> now, uh, I'm a member of a performance art organization called the Crap A Witch Amateur Performance Art Theater, and my partner couldn't show tonight, so I decided to read a little poetry from media stars of the 70s. This is from my private collection. And if you didn't know it, there was a big movement around 1978 where a lot of uh, television stars and movie stars and some stuntmen too got into a lot of uh, poetry to sort of balance their lives a little bit. New Age. That it started off the New Age movement pretty much. This is from a book this is a classic, classic tome. Yeah. The book itself is called Touch Me, and the first poem is called Touch Me. Touch Me. In secret places no one has reached before. In silent places where words only interfere. In sad places, where only whispering makes sense. Touch me. <laughs> Touch me in the morning when the night still clings, at midday when confusion crowds upon me, at twilight as I begin again to know who I am in the evening, when I see you and I hear you. Best of all, touch me. <laughs> Suzanne Summers. Oh, like a child who will never have enough love, for I am a girl who wants to be lost in your arms, a woman who has known enough pain to love a mother who sometimes is strong enough to give. Touch me. <laughs> I'm going to 
to skip that next one and, and go to my absolute favorite by her. I, you, I read this once every night before I go to bed. <laughs> I like the gentle, quiet loneliness of being alone. Because there's no one special now. No one irreplaceable like before. I have some freedom, some chance to be me. There are only voices now, names, responses, kind enough but not real because I'm not ready. I like the gentle, quiet loneliness of being alone. Although I thought a friend last night and almost called, but I decided not to because my hair needed washing and I don't know him too well and I want to look really good. I like the gentle, quiet loneliness of being alone, knowing that someday soon something will grow until everything's right not dramatic glances crossed, cast across crowded rooms. I'm nearsighted anyway. It'd probably be a houseboy, knowing that I will see in a special way, and I will want somebody to be near. This is real. <laughs> poem is a, a love poem by a fave of mine. All of these are, are the, the cream of the crop. I have an extensive library of this stuff, and there's some good stuff, and there's some bad stuff. Like, you know, you got your Ruth Buzzies, your, your Wink Martindales. I mean, they tried, but they didn't do it. Um, I want Wink. Wink? Sorry, man. You got Fran Tarkenton, uh, who was the host of a uh, a show called That's Incredible in the late 70s, and he was also a star quarterback, never, never won a football, uh, 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 what do you call it? Super Bowl. Super right. <laughs> never won a Super Bowl, but he was a damn good performer and, uh, and, and narrator for this program, and, and this poem's called Love Over Easy. <laughs> Here lie the tattered pages of the stages of a love. I've lived my life with many endings. Someday I'll have a happy one. Wondering, wandering, searching, finding, experiencing, cherishing, losing. Every sentence ends with a period. Every period of my life seems to end. Period. <laughs> Lonely is what I am when I am all I have. The malady of our society is loneliness. We are all so alone together. Yeah! I feel like somebody put my life on hold and forgot I was there. I'd like to be a kept man, kept from the pain of what love can become. Have I exhausted all my resources and sources, or am I just tired? Transitions, here to there, now to then, today to tomorrow. We're all transients in this world. I've lost love and I've found it so often. I've established a lost and found apartment in the store of my life. <laughs> the two ages of my life revolve living with and living without. Death is life without love. Can a song be a love song if there's no one to sing it to? I'll keep singing my song. Maybe I'll find somebody who cares about it. I don't need a leading lady. I just need a co-star. <laughs> now think about that, just for a second. The, the poem is not even half over, but... Oh, no. Oh, no. Who, who was on that, who was in that program with him? Kathy Lee. Kathy Lee Crosby. Now just pay attention and keep her in your mind while I read the rest of the poem. <laughs> it's getting pretty bad when a long-term relationship is a telephone call. All I have is today with the hopes of tomorrow. If you will be my today, maybe you will become my tomorrows. Today you are a stranger, but a delightful one. Can you take today for the mutual pleasure it has given and wait for tomorrow to find what gift it may bring? I hope we are among the fortunate few who will have, after this beautiful today, many tomorrows together. Love is a bond, liking and caring and 
are the torch and solder, uh, excuse me, the torch and solder that make the bond. Before loving you, you must fall in love. Time is with us. With each moment, you come to mean more than me, and perhaps I to you. With time, this being involved can be evolved. Time is all I have to spend. A minute saved is a minute earned. Don't waste me! <laughs> Once in a while, I meet somebody who's so right for me that it scares me. Scaring, caring, <laughs> sharing, moving, revolving, evolving. <laughs> Your place or mine? Why not ours? I've known existing with you, I've discovered being. When I wake up with you beside me, I know I can make it through the day knowing I'll receive the same gift tomorrow. <laughs> I love having love for breakfast. <laughs> Waking up with you is like a new beginning. I can now be content alone because I know that you think about me when we aren't together. You have given me a quiet place to live within the shelter of your love. How do I like my love? Over easy. <laughs> out to you, all I get is your answering service. <laughs> I dreamed about you last night, but it scared me. I don't understand. It was a beautiful dream. Maybe it scared me because, because it was a dream. <laughs> morning becomes morning without you. Why am I so important to you that you had to take enough time to hurt me? How many trophies do you need? <laughs> Doors are closing, walls are rising. I'm hiding again until the cuts and wounds turn into scars. Everyone seems to be so concerned with themselves that they really can't care. I guess I'll just pretend that I don't care, if they don't care. But I do, damn it! <laughs> Playing the clown wasn't being me, but, but at least I wasn't being me with the others. I couldn't be hurt except by myself. Everyone has to be someplace. Welcome to the place for those who have nowhere to go. I wish that I would never have to write about losing again. That's morbid. Writing about writing about losing? For the few reflections of bitterness, I plead temporary insanity. <laughs> Fran Targeton. Yeah! I'll skip that one. Um, yeah, I got a few poems uh, that I dug up from Abe Vigoda, borrowed from a friend of mine. <laughs> Abe Vigoda, as you well know, was the uh, star of uh, Barney Miller and had his own program called Fish. <laughs> okay. This is called Typhooning the Very Young. He bent over to steal the boy's white lily, the smell of fresh paint, the naked noon, solitaire white lily, the girl pool alley, remembrance of jerking him off in the alley. The neighborhood punks, taking it in their mouth, vanishing to other arms. Crocodile Billy. Gone Jake, minions from the water secure. Blue, bare blue drawers left in a dream, taking it dry. Asset to the community. These boys are like a fresco. Open mouth, wolf light, disintegrating in a hot liquid of their own blood. They hung out together though. Abe Pagoda, he invented the cut-up te technique. Burroughs just copied him. But then he figured, you know, hey, I've got this television gig, you know, you can have that. <laughs> this is another Abe Pagoda poem that you probably will think is a Burroughs poem too. It's called Junk No Junk. No is spelled K-N-O-W. 
<laughs> junk, no junk. I have no crystal today. The school buses, the cars, the lessons that teach walking other days. I used to tie ribbons and doll's hair, but now I put the plastic arms and legs and pedons that fill the water when it rains. This dirt shoe will fill my foot. You can't have everything, you. <laughs> uh, how much time do I have? All the time you want. All right. <laughs> Not quite. How much? A couple of minutes. Be straight with me. <laughs> okay, um, I have to get this poem out of the way. I know you all like Lee Majors, but he was a really terrible poem writer, but I, I wanted to uh, just to show you what, what he's done. This is a really obscure uh, book, even though it's about 500 pages of stuff like this. This is called It's Wonderful to Be in Love. Suddenly the whole world sings, and all the songs are written just for you. <laughs> and all the love poems, too. At night you have the most lovely dreams, and in the daytime, too, sometimes you feel like Romeo, sometimes you feel like Caesar. At one moment you're a child again, and the next you're as old as Adam. <laughs> There are times when you're sure that if you stood on tiptoe, you could touch the sky. At times when you feel so small. When you're together, nothing else matters. And when you're apart, nothing else matters either. All sorts of silly things can make you laugh or cry. Sometimes you're never sure, and sometimes you're sure that the whole wide world must know the way you feel. And so you play the clown just to hide it a little bit. It's wonderful to be in love, isn't it? Okay, I, I got two more poems left. Um, I saved the good ones for last. I don't know if you can all see the picture, but uh, need I, I say who this is by? Who is it? Evil can evil. And this poem's called Why. It seems that wherever in the world I go, no matter who nor what I know, people will look and some of them stare. And I wonder if they really care. They see this cane with its golden crown. Some of them smile, but most of them frown. I hear them laugh, I see them cry. No matter what, they always ask, why? 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 Well, I'm just like you, and you, and you, and you, and your wife. We all have a special purpose in life. <laughs> this way of life I'm glad I found. For like you, I too make the world go round. Oh yes, we're all alike. Yes, we are. We all have a dream on some faraway star. <laughs> For me, when it's all over and done at the end of the day, my men go relax, but I go pray. For I know that tomorrow in some other place, I'll have to fear that again to face. Could it be the quest for money or fame? Oh, no, no. <laughs> to play with my life is not much of a game. It's what I want, that, a want that's so dear. It's given me faith. I can face the fear. Oh, yes, I do think about a day in life when a fate came along and struck my way. Each time it's happened, they've all said, lucky the guy's not dead. And they were right. But I wanted to get up and try it again. I kept telling myself that I knew I could win. So I'd close my eyes to the Lord, I'd pray. Oh, help me, God. Let me walk someday. <laughs> and he did. Every stitch on every scar has brought me closer to that dream afar. <laughs> to be a man, 
to do my best. To stand alone is my only quest. Success is a term that has broad use. For having none in life, there is no excuse. For you, what I do is not right. But for me, it's not wrong. What I've been trying to tell you all along, and it's got to be. You ask why? 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 Well, <laughs> just like you, I gotta be me. Oh. Got a, I got a quick one, got a quick one. It's like about three haikus combined together. Um, this was handed to me by some street crazy, so I don't know if it actually is a poem by Gary Coleman, but it said Gary Coleman on it. <laughs> so I figured might as well read it. He was on a different strokes. You probably remember that program. This is called The Crash Course in Democracy. <laughs> Maverick for life. Whimsical deprivation, hold forth the banister. Glossy cheek, Timmy. <laughs> Count your blessings on the abacus of manifest. Pantsuit, 12 sizes too large. <laughs> but I guess that the only thing that matters really is the way you spit it up. Thank you. You know, I forgot to tell everybody here that the order of things happening tonight are not as they are printed on your schedule. Why? Because someone didn't want to go at 10.15, and so we moved them up to 10 o'clock, and then that person wanted to go later. So there were lots of changes to accommodate everybody, and now I hope everybody's happy. Yes. Is everybody happy? Another thing is, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Angie Rocket, and I am your MC for this evening. One T or two? Two T's, actually. My name is misspelled again. Every time my name gets printed on something, it is misspelled, but it is with two T's. Is it true you saw Johnny K today? Who? <laughs> Next, we have Bet Bellstraz. Her piece is entitled, Tough Meat and Sweet Potatoes, or Toughness and Sweetness Attempt to Meet.
parents, the disloyal friends, into the leftover refrigerated liquids that have been poured into a giant Kool-Aid plastic pitcher. With an old hair dye stained wooden spatula, stir the contents. Both alive and drowned will float to the surface despite centrifugal force. Then, as you fight nausea, pour it all into the sink, making sure every last plop flops out. Don't bother with the strainer. The garbage disposal will do its job as soon as you flip the switch. The tough guy. This is uh, for two of my friends. Derek and Susan, Woo. not together, but this is the first time I've read this in public, so uh, I'm nervous anyway, but that gives me another reason. Uh, why is this tough guy being so tough? Hyper as a bleeding ulcer. I could melt his iron heart if I wanted, and he would be liquids. But what kind of marriage would it bring? A roller coaster ride in the air, off the rails, and in horrifying underwater depths. A drowning. Pierced lips in bitter withdrawal. The deep, forceful voice without other affect. Hard, crinkled aluminum, encrusted eyes. They can turn red in water on cue at the mention of God. This man who fears the sacrilegious humor because it might drag him down to godless corruption. Yet he's sensitive and emotional. Clear finger lakes of soothing strokes. He's full with faith. Dense old mountain sun-warmed rock ledges to sit on in viewing comfort. He's humorous as laughing, unpredictable, gentle winds blowing my long, uneven, streaming hair. He's strong with fireplace marble blends. And he's mistakenly assuming his strength should be universal. He's an exploding volcanic island in the passion of birth. To watch him makes me drop into deep slumber with no air left for my fire. When he is burning with beginnings, there isn't the enchanting pause in time for mutual appreciations. So I've stepped back to let him burn wildly, boiling the water surrounding him, raising thick, blinding steams, snapping with increasing volumes, yelling into the night. But he took with him the heat that warmed me. Affection, a fond or tender feeling toward another. Emotion, a pathological mental or physical condition. The act of influencing or acting on. The state of being influenced or acted on. An attribute, mental tendency or disposition. Affectionate, having or displaying affection strongly or favorably disposed. That's what you say. We don't want no revolution. That's what you say. That's what you say. But I don't want your pity. All I want is revolution. 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 Turn this around and around. You know how long it takes to find something in a dictionary. 
tender, easily crushed or bruised, fragile, easily chewed or cut, having a delicate quality, young and vulnerable, physically frail, weak, sensitive to frost or severe cold, easily hurt, painful, sore, gentle and solicitous, expressing gentle emotions, loving, given to sympathy or sentimentality, soft, scrumpulous, likely to lean under sail, crank, to make tender, to treat with tender regard. Can I have a little lights on the audience, please? Just up a little. Thank you. Ms. Potato Head. This is a rap poetry performance about the post-performance poetic rap. Got that? By Miss Potato Head, the performance art rap consultant. Take some Epsom salt and some ants and take that with melted chocolate and a white rabbit. <laughs> Don't confront me because you'll stump me. Put me in a straight jacket because I'll snap back like a dragon, a snapdragon or a big yellow jacket. Don't stress me or undress me. I don't want to be naked with a birthday cake head. A neurological chemistry for nuclear physics ain't no kicks. Don't take away my emotional rights or I'll bite ya with venom. Bright red hair henna. Blood will drip from your denim while I'm bleeding in a Nazi high chair. Separate that you love me from what I did. Care. Then tell me. Tell me your feelings about my actions and which actions, sweet or tough, fluff or rough, there'll be saliva satisfactions. Tell me your thoughts from during my actions and which actions, your journal entries of memories, dreams, reflections, and esoteric inventions. <laughs> tell me the seeming meaning or political leaning of my actions. And which actions? Did you deconstruct it as contrived, constructionist, contemporary, convoluted, compromised, concocted? And communist just ain't in anymore. Tell me from the seeming, steaming meaning if you think you do or don't agree with me. Share your passions. Tell me if there was cohesion during the peace of season for you. Tell me your feelings, and I will appreciate you. Tell me your thoughts, and I will respect you. Tell me your reading of the meaning, and I will benefit from you. Then I can gauge my actions and create new actions. Tell me about you, and I will know you. <laughs> Gently caress me with who you are. Tell me how you read performance art with your heart, and I will love you, love you, love you, and tell you to. Intermission about 10 minutes or so while Happy the Clown sets up. <laughs>
The guy was a real user. He, he'd, uh, he'd make you work 60, 70 hour weeks and pay you for 40. So this poem is called Meet My Boss. And I wrote it the day I quit. <laughs> Meet My Boss. He has an irritating voice and a shit eating smile. He's got a charming little chuckle and breath pungent and vile, with accusing sidelong glances and incessant grating whines. At lunchtime, he will seek you out and delegate as he dines. He'll bring you heaps of documents and wave his tiny hands with buzzword <laughs> knowledge of what he's skimmed. He formulates his demands. He'll point to this and point to that, then stab at what's highlighted. And every time you see his sneering face, you've got to act delighted. For if, perchance, your loathing shows and does not escape detection, he'll bitch for months about your attitude and mutter insurrection. He speaks to you when you're seated, while he, now taller, stands, crowding you in your cubicle. He issues his demands. <laughs> on and on. Long past the time he's out of things to say. Long past the time he's hoarse. He'll stop mid-sentence. Pause. 
then pee himself in order to prolong his captivating intercourse. <laughs> Aren't you guys done yet? We're really pressed for time. Do your work quickly so you can help me with mine. It's a firm deadline, you know, so everyone must stay. It's all got to be finished by the next business day. Um, hmm. There was something else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here, why don't you also look at this? This is something I don't want you to miss. We'll work as a team. No one's going to go home. Okay, hold on for a minute, okay? My wife is on the phone. Right. Right. Yep. Right, honey. Yeah. Yeah, I'll see you in a few. First, I gotta tell everyone here what I want them to do. If I don't hold our hands, if I weren't always on top, nothing would get done since everything would stop. These guys would just wander. They'd putter and fiddle. They'd tinkle and t tinker and amble. They'd dawdle and diddle. By God above, I swear what a mess things would be. It would all be in shambles if it were not for me. I let everyone know that I have the power, that I give the raises and I set the hours. They write me memos and do what I say. They come up and ask me what I think is okay. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll see you in a few. As soon as I tell everyone just what to do. Someone will be responsible for each action item. I'll break down the tasks and let you guys divide them. I know that this project is gonna be great. The stuff that you've done has all been first rate. The end is in sight, but now my dinner's getting cold. So, okay, is there anything else that you need to be told? I'll leave my phone number in case you're in doubt. That way there'll be no excuse if you can't figure it out. I want graphs and numbers. Figures and tables, charts and statistics, and long-winded fables. You know what I want now, so start earning your pay and have it all done by the next business day. Bye-bye, I say, as best as I can, trying to get away from this man. Good night, he says, and looks down at the floor, then folding his arms, he stops to think, to think just a little bit more. Out of gas at long, long last, he finally turns away. As he heads for the lot, you can see in his face there is something, something important. He is sure there is something important that he forgot to say. Yeah. This one um, is a, uh, a love poem, but it's, it's sort of a joke love poem. Um, <laughs> There's a, a person right here in this very audience, since a murderer in the room, uh, who uh, was new to town and wasn't going out with anyone, and so we had a Valentine's win a date with Jarrett poem contest, a love poem. And we had to write a poem of love to answer. So um, he uh, he got a couple of a uh, couple of sincere ones, some good ones. And then he got a bunch of um, joke ones, and uh, this is one of the joke ones that I wrote. It's all real. Yeah. Oh, Jared. Oh, Jared. Oh, Jared, 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 my love. You play your guitar like the angels above. Your soft, manly smile makes my warm blood race. I cream in my dreams as I feel your embrace. To touch you, to hold you, to go to your gigs to be alone with, and moan with, and later on talk on the phone with you, <laughs> would be a Valentine's Day dream come true. <laughs> yeah, it's a sensitive one. <laughs> and then, uh, this one, um, I'm gonna make it short because I, I was gonna tell a shaggy dog story, but we're running late, so I'm gonna clip it because it's, it's an open ended one. Maybe you can come to a party sometime at my place and I'll tell the shaggy dog story. Then. So, this is um, my, uh, my statement of purpose to go to art school, which a lot of you know, it's uh, kind of. I, I, I'm just finishing a master's in computer science, and people are saying, Why are you going to art school? And, uh, you know, like Evil Knievel said, you know, I just go. 
So here's my statement of purpose. This is uh, an official document. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggling, wiggly, wiggler, wriggling, fiddler, twisting, squirmer. Busy, busy, quizzy body business. Step right this way. What's your purpose? Just who are you anyway? Hi ho, and how do you do? Well, I'm damned if I don't. I couldn't have said what I said any better myself, and I won't.
How's that sound? Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Hello, hello. Check, check, check. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Check, check, check. Let's see this mic. A little better, a little better. Hello, hello. That's good. Let me just one more. So it doesn't matter, you know. People who want to listen will listen. People who want to talk will talk. It's cool. This first one's called Almost Fourth of July. <clears throat> Somebody told me that that was like a Springsteen title or something. I said, okay. <laughs> sorry about that. So no one take offense there. <clears throat> Wet oil palm on my son's back, slack and white, his fair skin exposed in heat and glare. My head spins. Briefly hear my husband's hand over, briefly hear my husband's hand over mouth, radio cackle. Whale on the beach, whale on the beach. I sling my hips to water's edge and steep like a tea bag in the cold sea. My little boy, oblivious, my hero. His chief father rakes pebbles and straw like moon rocks. The three of us lie on the deserted beach. I think of pig steaks, chopping blocks, bull's eyes. I was just doing this thing over at MIT, the, uh, the performance thing, and we were talking earlier tonight about cemeteries and funerals and wakes. Don't ask me how we got on that subject, but this is for some of those people who I was talking about that with. This is an elegy. Process, form, smoke, speech. Process, form, smoke, hunger. Process, form, smoke, change. Process, form, change, idol. Process, religion, hunger, form. The process of religion hungers for form. You will spend long nights tapping out every rhythm you have ever heard. I've finally decided to chuck it all and leave. Have you lost your change, form, idol? Have you risen past two points where change, form, idol translate into yearning? Every day, I walk by the place where her soul was sucked up and gone. I want to know what is the impulse behind visiting someone's grave. I've never done anything like that. Is it more meaningful? Not the place of violent jerkings, of the tearing of the spirit, but the other, the cemetery, a place of forgetting and remembering. I keep trying to picture how it happened, as if that might get me closer to it. There is only one thing you leave behind, before the quick flutter of the heart, before the impatient tap of the fingers. There are two ways to leave, naturally and unnaturally, as darkness waits just outside the windows. All right. This next one is called Crystal Knot. Crystal Knot was the, right. the night of smashing of windows in Germany. That's right, man. <laughs> Crystal Knot. Brought down, sorry, Crystal Knot. Rage of sun brought down, smothers the beds, scattered feathers, and remains of something human. The distinction of each thing in its own white cup of snow. Each, each step we take toward forgetting, memorizing nothing, committing nothing to speech, we lie mute. We dream and forget what we dreamed. Forget the voices that said, move into the showers for delousing. We live continuous moments, we live continuous lies, forgetting and powered into the future. Our past lies between the pages of a book. Shtetl, ghetto, shul. The littered past covered with blank snow. Fog lights, maneuvered, we moved towards the showers. Somehow I fell, pushed to one side, and later was used to pull bodies from the mass graves. The mask of light, common indifference, bearing the stamp, the brute kick, the quick kill, 
We move toward that unknown. Berlin, 1936. A shattering, then the shuttered windows. Last time I read this one, someone came up to me afterwards and we were talking and they said, so how old is your son? And I looked at him and said, I don't have a son. I, I don't know how I got that out of this, but I guess it's possible. This one's called My Father's Arms. <clears throat> In the back seat, delirious, all I heard were eight cylinders roaring through my fever. In the front seat, my two elder brothers hummed the dashboard song. Before long, we would reach Lake Powell and spend the night on a dark wood dock to fish for the unsleeping carp under the humming light. Meanwhile, he sat in back, looked out, knowing as it passed by, it was leaving forever. This place, this time, our lives like this. Our loss was in turning into men who touch only in the brief clutch of grief or stiff embrace when coming home again. I was 10 that year. This one is tentatively untitled, but it's also titled The Tunnel. <clears throat> we cannot first come, then leave unknowingly, all first after what is retaliated against. These things have gone on in every generation. Only the places change. There are those victims, some help. Others are idle. Some care about nothing but themselves. We ran through the smoke-filled tunnel. Conditions of every generation. Heartsick that this many had to die. She is young. Poverty has already claimed her. Others are idle from inability or lethargy. We see this in every generation. Some care only about tunnels, about getting to another place. They were infested and some were comatose. She was young and still sleeping. Poverty, like smoke, covered everything. We kept running, but hearing the sounds in front of us that should have been behind us. We cared, but we were subjugated, our hands tied. No one thought that that much was worth anything. We wanted to get to another place. There was a way, but we ran thinking there were more of them. The tunnel was covered over by some. We couldn't tell. We ran, heard sounds before we arrived, echoes that should have been behind us. No one could tell how long she had been lying there. Fear tied our hands. They ran in front of us, but it was too late. Others had filled sacks with contaminated water. They did not know this. We could have said something. We ran in something like smoke, unsure, our hands tied, sounds coming from in front of us like echoes that should have been behind. In every generation, it is the same. The faces are often much the same. Poverty, a look of anguish on her face as she slept. Places changed, but conditions remained, so we ran. Some for help, some of our hands were tied. Some stumbled as if the smoke had overcome them. Conditions for every generation in denial, subjugation, elimination. Many were claimed already. The sounds came from in front of us. They were not echoes. This many had to die. She holds up her hand. Contaminated water leaked all over the ground. To get to another place was worth this. We stumbled. Some of our hands were tied. After this, we will no longer speak to each other the same way. Places change. It is, it is the same in every generation. This is my last one, and this is called Graves. <clears throat> I changed this around before I came, so I'm trying to figure out what I changed around. Yeah. <clears throat> in the false darkness, we listened to the whispers of boat wood on smooth stone. We ached towards morning, confused, our own names foreign on our lips. Caught in this bed, we're like strangers who don't know how to say who we are, where we've been, what it means to be here. Our faces like the baffled women in the marketplace when we ask for more fruit and they point to each glowing clump. But we don't know how to say this one here or that one there, so we speak with our hands. 
damp sea air blends with the scent of crushed grapes. Beneath us, every cellar holds clusters of them, like tiny, glistening lamps. Two, through streets like catacombs, wordless shapes vanish into the closed mouths of doorways. It is the same way each night. In autumn, all hanging vines are taken down, pressed fresh. Down one alley, there is a throw of light on cobblestones from an open doorway. Inside, a husband and wife worked a wine press by bulb light. They said nothing, both natural in their movements. He, in after work clothes and sandals, unclamped the lid. His wife pushed the bird stems, twigs, and berries into the open end. He shut it tight, spun the nut, and torqued the handle. He eased into the push and pull until a black juice rushed through the slats and they were stained with it, a rich berry red on their clothes, on their hands. In the stark light, she said nothing and watched him from behind. A few grapes tumbled to her mouth. Three, do you hear the silence? So loud, so total, it swallows all we say, devouring each word in the unsyllable darkness. On our faces, a braille of confusion, both so coldly male and female. There are things not said, things we must bring back. It is this, not the myth of husband and wife, but how they work together. I must enter there and be accepted back, not as a god or some proud hero, but as a man, torn, frightened, wanting to learn, carefully, as gently as grapes taken down from trellises. Thank you. How many people, how many people know the swallow will tell you? How many know it? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to need your help on this one. Uh, here's the chorus. You just sing along. Ooh, I more time because you're gonna have to do this while playing.
Thank you to everybody who's uh, involved putting this on. Chaos by Hakeem Bey.
You. And you. And you. What size is your shoe? And you over there. Come with us. But you must go now while there still is time. But first, bring us meat. Meat for the journey. Meat so that we may be strong. Yes, bring us meat and you and I shall wander down the long road to the egg farm. Light of heart, fleet of foot. Refreshed and nourished, arm in arm. But you must go now, it is imperative. Rise up and leave this room and go now. Go, go to the egg farm. You and you and you with your size 11 shoes and you over there. Get up and go now. Get up off of your chairs. Raise your dusty heads and go through these arches onto Mass Avenue. Leave. Go to the egg farm. Go now. Get up. Rise. It is imperative. You must leave now. Get up. Go. Now. Eat. have discovered the, the source of all knowledge and therefore the source for self-realization and, and personal fulfillment and we're going to share that knowledge with you and then we're going to use that source using this thing we've hung up here so I want to present to you ladies and gentlemen the source for all knowledge Mo Howard world, you must first believe and know what Mo is not. So, for Mo, the way, the truth, and the light, come to know him.
Mo a great? Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> and sorry, sorry. Limited time, lots of acts. On a short night. Uh, we're Meatball Sluxus. We're from, uh, thank you, we're from Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, we're based at, out of AS220, which is an alternative space and gallery. AS220, it's a club. Uh, it's right up above the rocket, if you ever downtown you know what that is. And uh, we're, we're there every Saturday night. We do a thing called Cabaret of the Oddly Normal, so come down and check us out tonight. Um, we'd like to thank, who do we like to thank? We want to thank... Nita, 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 Nita. 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 And we want to thank everybody here in Eventworks and Hope, uh, El Dorado in the Middle East and uh, Boston in general for having us here. And Mass College of Art and Joe Morris and Joe Morris' mother. Okay, now. Anyway, uh, before we go on to our last thing, introduce the group alphabetically in reverse order, starting on my right, Humberto Krenka. On guitar, Joe Auger. Yeah. On bass drum and assorted uh, sunshine.